Hey guys, Danny Ray with LifeTelesalesMentor.com. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Um, just want to go over a few things today. Actually, not, not just a few things, but um, go over my foundation of how I became a kick-ass salesman over the phone. Okay, I've been doing sales over the phone for many, many years. I've always used the same principles. Okay, and it's the straight line. You know, you guys know the straight line. Who's who's the founder of the straight line? Where it came from? Jordan Belfort, uh, who, in my opinion, is probably the best sales trainer in the world. I mean, I don't even think anybody comes even close to him. Uh, how he approaches it, how he simplifies it, and how he uh, pretty much makes something very, very simple, where most every salesman out there complicate the hell out of things. So. I'm briefly going to go over this real fast. Again, um, if you guys don't know about my history, I, I, I became an uh, investment banker, stockbroker back in the mid to early 90s. Okay, I started out as a cold caller at Stratton Oakmont. Now, if any of you guys ever seen The Wolf of Wall Street, uh, Stratton Oakmont was founded by Jordan Belfort, okay, a uh, stock firm on Long Island, okay, in Lake Success. Okay, um, I was a cold caller there. Not for long, about six months, okay, and what happened was my car broke down. Now, <laughs> I had a car that I was driving there every day. Now, if any of you guys know Long Island, I have a, I had a car that literally the gas tank leaked. It was a, the car I had was such a piece of garbage, okay, it was banged up, um, literally the gas tank leaked, meaning that I would put enough gas in it to get me to Lake Success, Okay, Marcus Avenue and Lake Success with my gas tank leaking to the point where I would park the car away from everybody across the parking lot, okay, because it reeked the gas. I mean, I would come to the office reeking the gas, okay. All right, so I used to drive 40 miles a day in Long Island traffic with a car. I don't even think it was registered. I, I don't even think the plates were good, <laughs> okay, but just the sacrifice of what I wanted to achieve. And... Um, what happened was I worked there for about six months as a cold caller and I really embraced uh, the straight line and how the psychology and the philosophy behind it. Okay, and unfortunately, um, I went ahead and the car obviously broke down. Okay, I was only 19, 20 years old, uh, just turned 20 actually, and I didn't have any way out there. So, um, lo and behold, I worked at another firm, okay, they made the, the movie Boiler Room after, that was actually Sterling Foster, okay, uh, which from that point on, my career, you know, as a stockbroker lasted about 11 years, and then I ventured off, okay, to other things, opening businesses, and so on and so forth. But I've sold everything, I've sold mortgages, I've sold gold, uh, uh, you know, I've sold uh, currencies, um, loan modification, debt consolidation, you name it, I have sold it and I've always used this system and I've always been a top producer no matter what I sold. And it was all derived from this system, okay? So I'm just gonna go briefly go over this and again, I cannot, the person that, needs, that gets most of the props here is Jordan Belfort. Again, the system, it works, it's fantastic and it's something I've used for 27 years in any sales I've ever done. All right, so I just wanna go over this real fast with you to give you some breakdown. All right, um, this is the straight line. Okay, what you got to understand is the straight line is every sale is a straight line. The fastest distance be between two places is a straight line. Okay, so this is a very important thing psychology, uh, psychologically and, uh, and to understand this philosophy of selling. Okay, um, me and some of my biggest sales or maybe my fastest sales or my average sales Okay, one call closes, which usually I'm at rates and the, and, the, and the clients close in less than 15 minutes. Now, my fastest sale over the phone selling a policy from stone cold to finish was about eight minutes. Okay, eight minutes. Had a client in the car, in traffic, straight, literally from beginning to end, eight minutes. Okay, I was at rates at like three and a half minutes, four minutes, qualifying the client. Okay, um, again, it's something that's very, not, not very... Uh, ordinary, okay, but that's my fastest sale. But a really good sale usually takes place uh, for me. Um, I mean, they're saying yes in about 10, 12 minutes, you know, no longer than 15, okay. And I don't waste my time with prospects that uh, are not closable. I'll just move on to the next one, give them my phone number. And a lot of times, the how I handle the call, um, they'll call me back, all right. So um, here's the deal, okay. <clears throat> um, 
when you when you're talking to a prospect, okay, you got to go ahead and you have to be at a level ten when it comes to absolute certainty. You have to be certain of what you're selling. You have to be certain of who you are. And you got to be certain that what you're offering is the best. There's nothing better. Okay. If you're not, you're not going to sell at a high level. You'll get sales, but you're not going to be selling at a high level. I'm talking about the difference between an ordinary sales guy and a guy that just blows everybody out of the water to the point where they laugh at the goals you set, but then you crush them as they watch. Okay. And they just sit there in awe and their jaw drops and they're just speechless. Okay. So that's the kind of salesman I am. Okay. Um, so it's very, very important to, to continue that certainty throughout the entire conversation. Okay, you're absolutely certain so you're, because you're going to be on, on a certainty scale of a 10. Let me call it a level 10 throughout the entire conversation. Your prospect starts out at about a two, three, maybe a four. And as you go through the straight line, okay, which building rapport consciously and unconsciously, okay, as you're going through the straight line from opening to closing, okay, his certainty scale, or the client's certainty scale will increase as the conversation goes on. As they go from two, three, four, to four, five, to six, seven, you're still at a level 10 of certainty in every single thing you're saying. Very important. Okay, going ahead and building rapport is, a, is, is the backbone of the sale. Okay, building rapport generates trust. Okay, you generate building rapport and trust by asking great questions. Okay, by using questions to gather intelligence. Okay, now you got, you got to understand something. Okay, that asking great questions is very pivotal because the client, the prospect, will actually tell you how to close them. Okay, now again, in the beginning of the conversation, you got to be sharp as a razor blade. You got to be enthusiastic as hell. If you take care of those two things, then the client will portray you as an expert or the best in the business because it's coming off when you tone out of your voice, your certainty, your bottled enthusiasm, and you're sharp. Okay? No hesitation in your voice. No, no downtime of three or four seconds while you're shuffling through papers and trying to think what you're going to say. You have to hone your skill. You, you, you have to hone your skill. You must make one mistake a day. You have to be absolutely obsessed with this. Okay, you got to dive in. Okay, you cannot wait to know everything before you do anything. Okay, that would be equivalent of walking around a swimming pool on a 122 degree day and touching at the water with your toes. Just dive in. Okay, so it's very, very important to uh, keep absolute certainty throughout the course of the whole call, build rapport by asking great questions. Okay, and the, the prospect will tell you how to close them. Now, with that said, you also got to not only gather intelligence, you know, and gain rapport, but you have to understand what kind of client you're talking to. Okay. Understanding how, what, you're t what kind of client you're talking to will help you and give you the ability to go in which direction you need to do. Now, again, the straight line sale, every sale is the same. Every presentation is the exact same. You just have to re adapt and respond to who your prospect is. Now, a prospect has a threshold either they have a very high threshold action threshold or they have a very low threshold action threshold me personally i'm a rollover i can walk down the street anybody's going to sell me okay you can sell me a pencil i'm going to buy it my action threshold is very low okay i trust everybody okay i'll buy anything then you have clients that have and a very very high action threshold who don't trust anybody no matter what you say they're not going to trust you or they're not going to buy from you now, those particular prospects are the prospects that you need to increase their pain threshold. Their pain threshold is telling them why, what's the problem that they have. In our case in life insurance, obviously the problem is, is financial burden for the family. Okay, um, the way I structure my straight line pitch for my agents, okay, is to hit those PowerPoints, ask good questions, fact find. Okay, where they're at rates in about 10 minutes. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a textbook straight line pitch. 
okay, from point to finish, gathering intelligence, asking good questions, finding that pain point. And when you find that pain point, and, you know, just to give you an idea, you know, Mrs. Jones, why'd you click on the ad? What, what's the, what loved one came to mind? Okay, and they'll tell you, well, you know what I was thinking about? My, my daughter, okay, okay. And then a couple of paragraphs down the straight line in the script, I'll ask him, God forbid, if he passed away tomorrow, who will identify the body and take care of all this? And hoping that they're going to mention the same person. Okay, because that right there, that's their pain threshold, is passing away and having that person, okay, be left with a huge financial burden. So you got to focus on that. So as you focus on that pain of that person having to go through that pain, okay, their action threshold will decrease as their pain threshold increases. Okay, so it's very, very important, okay, uh, again, to um, go through the straight line. Okay, now again, if you're talking to a client asking good questions, see this little barrier right here? This is natural. You want to stay into these boundaries right here. That's having the conversation. That's where the rapport is built. That's where the questions are answered. Now, if you are talking to a prospect and they have taken you off, this, off, off topic, and next thing you know, you're talking about their Aunt Judy in 1957 climbing, or climbing a, a rock, you know, climbing a mountain, rock climbing, okay, and you're venturing off and you're 15 minutes into the conversation and you're not on topic, you are toast. Toast. That's it. Hang up the phone. You're done. All right. Clients don't do business with friends. Once you become their friends, they're not going to, they're going to give you things like, well, you know what? Listen, man, let's talk tomorrow. Call me next week. Call me next week. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. Give me a guys back. They're never going to answer the phone again. Okay. That's it. You're toast. So you need to go ahead and keep it through, you know, asking questions, gathering intelligence, but also looping back to, um, to the straight line. Okay, remember from opening to close. Okay, and throughout the course of the conversation, you have to be the clients for them to order in order for them to buy, they must be at a level 10. Okay, they got to believe in you. Most importantly, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to a client and they said, Okay, let's do it. Oh, yeah, by the way, Danny, what are we buying again? Because I sold them me. Okay, it's so important. It's so important to future pace. It's so important to sell them on the return that they don't even have yet. Okay, very, very important. When you're talking to a client, sell them. Say, Mr. Jones, if I had been your client for your family, I'm sorry, if I had been your agent for your mom, dad, sisters, brothers, aunts, and uncles, and I've consistently protected them over the, the decades that I've done business with them, would there be any question that you wouldn't buy here today? The client's going to say no. Of course he would. A lot of times they say, of course, no, of course I would. Exactly. I don't have that luxury of having that track record. Most importantly, I have yet to protect you or your family. But that's what I'm looking to establish here today, a benchmark for all of our future business. I mean, let me ask you, if I go ahead and hold you by the hand and get you applied for this policy, okay, and it's everything that I say it is, are you going to be a little more confident in my abilities? The client's going to say yes. And it's safe to say that once I've done that, you will share with me with some of your friends. They're going to say yes. Okay, I need to be right here. First impressions are lasting ones, aren't they? Client's going to say yes. Let me impress you. Let's get started here today. Okay, let's get you medically approved. Okay, we'll pick the due date out. And all that I ask of you is that once I, this policy is everything that I say it is, just, get, just share me with one of your friends. Do I have that commitment? They're going to say yes. And then you say that's all that I ask. Do you require a middle initial in your name? It's usually that simple. You're selling them on you. Okay, again, asking good questions and fact-finding is very important. Okay, one of the biggest questions I like to ask, okay, to a client when you're gathering intelligence is ask them about the, what they work. What do they do for a living? Remember, if you're selling final expense, you're talking to people that have decades of experience. These are people that are retired. They're smart people. They have a lot of wisdom. Okay, most of them worked hard for decades so when you go ahead and bring up, so what'd you do for a living? Oh, I did, you know, I did ABC and XYZ. Okay, then at that point, you want to go ahead and, and go pry into this fact, well, well, you know, how'd you get to where you are? Well, I worked hard. You want them to say that, listen, I worked my butt off. I, you know, I, I, I got promoted. And then you say, around, well, you didn't get to that position, but you worked banker hours, right? You didn't work three hours a day to get those promotions, right? You know, way I worked 12 to 15. That's what you want them to say. 
because later on in the conversation, you're going to say that you are, you, you do the same thing. Give me the one shot, the same shot that your manager gave you or that one person gave to you, and I'm going to make my one shot count just like you. And they're going to feel obligated to say, okay, because you know why? Because you're just like them. Okay, you're just like them. All right, you're going ahead and you're portraying yourself as re and relating to them. People like to do business with people like them. Okay, so it's very, very important. People love to do business with people like them. But, it, but just to rehash a little bit, when you're talking to the client, and this is how I sell, and I don't sell, okay? I, I genuinely, passionately care about the client. I do from the depths of my soul. I don't even think about the sale. All I know I need to do is care about the client passionately, relate to that client to the point where he trusts me. Remember, clients do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. So it's very important. Don't think about the sale. Don't think about bills. If you truly want to be great at this, you need to go ahead and passionately care about your client. Okay? Relate to your client. All right? Don't manufacture rapport. Okay? That's bullshit. They've been doing this for decades. They're smart people. They have abundance of wisdom. They know it's disingenuous. Once you're disingenuous to your client, they, you repulse them. Okay, so you got to focus on caring about your client. Seriously, care. Okay, you need to care passionately about your client. Okay, and relate to them. Do what's best for them. They have to literally feel the passion over the phone to them in their bones that, you know what? This Danny Ray, he's, he's, really, he's really looking out for me. That comes through tonality. Okay, that comes through tonality and enthusiasm. 90% of a phone call is tonality and enthusiasm. The other 10% are just words. I see agents all the time making a conversation with a client be 50, 60% words and 40, 40, 50, 40 to 50% tonality and enthusiasm. Selling is not telling. It's not. That's how you kill a sale. Okay, so it's very, very important, okay, to go ahead and be passionate about what you're offering a client. Care about them. The sales will come in truckloads if you just care, care passionately, and you, you relate to them, okay, genuinely, okay? Now, if they fly fish, don't tell them they're a fly fisher. If you're not, <laughs> ask one question, you're toast. I'd rather say, you know what, I always wanted to do that. Which, let, me say, let me ask you a question. How, uh, if they really truly love fly fishing, and they love any kind of, of, of hobby that you're talking about, I say, you know what, I always wondered about that. But, but say it if you really did. Like me, I, I like the, you know, new things. I like to do things. Okay? So I'll, I'll ask them, how do, how, you know, what kind of rod do you use? Why do, they, why do they do this in the water? Because you're asking those questions, and they're just going to talk. They like talking about themselves. Let them. But you got to be genuine and passionate, okay? And remember, you know, that's really the most important thing, okay? Um, also, here's, here's the other part of the, the straight line, okay? Again, powerful language patterns. I said that before, okay? Your perfect strip, script is created from the very best versions of different presentations, okay? Tweak your presentation, okay? Use questions to handle an objection. If somebody gives you an objection, like... Oh, you know what? Um, I got to talk to my wife. Um, I'm shopping around. I got to talk to my kids. That is is not even valid. Okay, that's just a smoke screen. Either the, the prospect is selling you on why they're not buying, or you're selling them. So if you get off the phone, you were sold. Okay, so you you got to learn how to deflect objections. Don't even address them. The only objection that's really valid is the fact that they don't know you. Now, unfortunately, they're never going to tell you that. So you have to extract that from them. Okay, that's the most important thing.
You have to extract that objection from them. The, I got to talk to my wife. I got to talk to my kids. I'm still shopping around. That is just a creative way to get you off the phone. And weak salesmen take the bait. Okay, but the fact of the matter is, okay, you can not address it, deflect it, and say, let me ask you a question, Mrs. Jones. Do you like the idea? Do you see how this can protect your family? Say it with passion and with, with utter sincerity, that tonality. Okay, and they'll tell you. They'll tell you why. You know, maybe it's the fact that you don't know me. Then you go into, well, if I'd been your agent in your family for the last two or three decades, helping your grandparents, your aunts and uncles, and your moms and dads, would there be even a question why you wouldn't buy from me today? They're going to say, no, of course I'd buy from you. And that's when you have them. Then you want to bring up maybe a question you asked about how they worked. You can give them a nice, good self. Like, listen, I work 15 hours a day making sure that you have the absolute best options available to you. I mean, that's the kind of agent you want in your corner, am I right? Yes. You got them on the phone. I work 15 hours a day. I don't need your business. I deserve your business. It doesn't abs it makes no sense at all for you not to start a relationship with me. I work too damn hard not to earn your business. Give me the one shot I deserve. I'll make the one shot count. And that's all they going to hear. Enthusiasm, passion. They want to know that you're the best. So give it to them. Okay. And again, believe me, you will not be sorry. Does that sound fair enough? Do you see that right there? Okay, this is all textbook stuff, J JB stuff, okay? This is stuff that I've done for years, okay? Years, okay? Um, so you just wanna make sure you stay in the straight line, okay? Uh, revise your script, okay? Um, don't front load a script. The most important thing is getting the rates. Save all your ammunition for after the first no, okay? Gather intelligence, gain rapport. Okay, um, clients got to love the product, the clients got to trust you, and they got to trust your company. So you better have something to say about all three, okay, for them to get to level 10. Okay, the amount of energy you put in is the amount of benefits you're going to get out. Okay, and you want a client to be this. Okay, again, when I have a client tell me that, Danny, all right, let's do it. What are we buying again? This is it right here. you got a customer for life. Okay, and they know it. Okay, so you gotta, you got to listen. you got to be a great listener. Okay, you got to ask questions and be a great listener. Focus on being a great listener. Okay, selling is not telling. All right, selling is not telling. All right, so uh, I just want to go ahead and go over this a little briefly with you. All right, I got a lot of passion with this, guys, gals. All right, um, do the right thing for your client. You want to make, you want to be successful in this business? Okay, know what you're talking about. Be passionate in what you're doing. Okay, care about your client. Okay, relate to them. Don't think about the sale. Sales comes in drifts and droves if you do the right thing. Okay, don't be salesy. Care. Okay, and you know what? If they, if they, only talk to people that are closable. I have no problem saying, you know, Mr. Jones, you know what? Maybe this is not the right time. Listen, go down the road. You got an all state and a, uh, you know, progressive in town. Okay, go to them. They're local with you. That maybe you'll be more comfortable. You're going to be paying 30, 40 percent higher, but at least you know you're paying for that comfortability. Just give them. Okay, no agent does that. Believe me, you'll get a phone call back a lot more than you think. All right. So um, that was just my little input today. I hope uh, you enjoyed this little video. This is how I look at the business. And this is why I, you know, when I put my head down, I really believe there's not a person in this industry that can write more business than I, did, I do. Because ultimately, the three things I do is I give, a, I give a shit about my client. I ultimately passionately care about them. All right. I relate to them and I just give them what they want and what they need. Okay. Ask good questions. They will tell you what they need. Ask good questions. They will tell you how to close them. All right. So um, I'm going to be making some of these videos at least once a week for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. All right. Put some comments in the below. And, um, and um, you know, I'll make videos on what you guys need. Okay. But again, be passionate about what you are selling. Be passionate about helping your clients. Selling's not telling. Ask good questions. Gain real rapport. Um, ask good questions for gathering intelligence. And again, the client, if you passionately care about the client, the client's going to buy from you because they're going to hear it in your tonality and your enthusiasm. All right, with that said, I hope you guys have a great day.